Hi, everyone. My name is Bernadette. I'm one of the co-founders of Mary's Retreat, and I'm so glad you're here today. This talk is about charisms. Charisms are literal superpowers that the Holy Spirit gives to us to build His church. They are gifts that are uniquely designed to each of us, and when we use our charisms, we feel energy and joy because God is doing 99% of the work, and we are close to Him in those moments. The results are way beyond human explanation. They are God's hands at work. Now, this retreat exists because of charisms. We are a team of seven women, and we had to shift our entire retreat planning because of the virus. And now it is so much bigger than anything we would have imagined. That's not normal. That is not our talent or our connections. It's charisms. It's the Holy Spirit acting through us to build and glorify the church in this very moment. And the best part is, you have these too. And it's up to you to say yes to God that they manifest in your life. So what are charisms? Charisms are supernatural gifts that are unique. No two people have exactly the same ones. They're intended to build the church so that we can glorify Christ to help people receive God's love. And the Holy Spirit reveals them to us and he helps us to use them. We don't own our charisms. They come and go as God desires. And we need the Holy Spirit's intercession to act on these charisms. They are always anchored in love. As St. Paul says, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. It's really all in love and all to be able to give that love back to God and bring people to God through what we do. I want to give you some examples. These are not at all exhaustive. Uh, there are too many charisms to really count. So take this with just a little sneak peek of what might be under the surface for you. The first one is craftsmanship. People who have this craftsmanship charism make art that is so beautiful, it touches souls. It makes people feel welcomed and loved, and it really gives a glimpse of God's creative genius. Another one is evangelism. People who naturally share their faith and God's love in how they act or speak, they always feel very gentle and without even trying or being pushy, they bring people closer to want to get to know God more. The next one, it is administration. These are people who are typically behind the scenes who have this charism, who love working in massive organizational problems, and they find energy as they cut through the noise and solve big logistical problems. Another one is encouragement. Now, these are the people you call if you've had a bad day. And people who have this charism often receive friends and strangers even who come to them and share really deep things completely unprompted and they feel at ease and are able to comfort them in that moment. Another beautiful charism is faith. People who just know that God is going to come through and they're able to act with confidence because they really trust in God's intercession. And then finally, there's pastoring. People who naturally create a space of trust and confidence in a group so that everyone is able to share and nurture long-term spiritual growth. This person is the glue to tighten a group's bonds. Now, some of these examples may have resonated with you. Some may not. There are a ton more. The main thing is really to explore where the Holy Spirit acts strongly through you and then act. And I want to encourage you to say yes to your charisms. It is the journey of a lifetime. And to make that a bit more concrete, I want to tell you about a new charism that was revealed to me during this retreat planning process. And that charism is leadership. And let me tell you, this has made me so uncomfortable to say yes to this charism. I was really afraid of, of giving up my control and saying, yes, God, I'm going to step into this role that doesn't feel comfortable for me right now. And the reason that I've 
been able to go on this journey and do this is because the team was giving me feedback. They were giving me that positive, unprompted feedback that they saw this charism in me. And it was in small ways, little asks like, hey, could you be the spokesperson at this meeting with our speakers? Or could you help us because we need to define our core really clearly for social media? Or we have a really tricky decision we have to make here. Can you help us think this through? And slowly, I started to recognize and accept that this was really happening. I was being called to leadership to say yes to this charism of the Holy Spirit acting in me. Because as I stepped into those conversations and those moments, I felt comfortable. I felt at ease. What I was uncomfortable with is the title of leader. And I think a lot of women resonate with that, right? Like, It can feel scary to say yes to the charism of leadership, but I've realized the church needs us. It needed me in this retreat, and I know it needs you in so many other situations. And slowly, as I prayed about this, I really asked God to give me courage and to say yes to Him and trust His will. And it's really been beautiful and freeing to say yes, because I know I'm saying yes to the Holy Spirit for him to act through me, and the results at the end of the day are his, and that's just a gift. People who have this leadership charism tend to naturally have a vision of what could be, and are able to empower a team or a set of people to create space for God to act. Because if you're going to make something big, God has to be guiding you all the way through, and the leader's vision is only a tiny piece of what God imagined, which is why this retreat, which was supposed to be physical, is now virtual and way bigger than what I could have imagined all those months ago. Now, more generally, living my charisms has helped me to live my vocation as a laywoman with confidence and joy and fearlessness, and there's a lot of freedom that comes for every one of us when we accept our charisms because we know they come from God, right? And we know that the results are His results. That helps me and you to take a step back and not focus on the results but instead focus on God and where he is in that moment because that's what matters at the end of the day. And we can be freed of any jealousy of someone else's charisms because again, those charisms are a reflection of God, not that person, just God. And that's a gift to every single one of us. So I wanna get practical for you of how to discern your charisms. In summary, you should be seeing extraordinary results for a tiny amount of work. You should be feeling energy and you should be getting consistent positive feedback whenever you practice these charisms. So let's break that down on the results. You should be seeing amazing, recognizable impact. It is not human given how little work you actually put into it. That's because God is doing 99% of the work here. Another thing is personal, joyful ease. You should feel invigorated and peaceful when you practice your charisms. You should feel energy at the end of doing whatever that might be. And then finally, you should be getting a lot of amazing feedback, unprompted, positive feedback about the effect, how people felt. And it might happen a ton. You might not even register anymore because it happens so often, or you could even be brushing it off. But you'll hear things like, I felt so welcome, or I felt really heard. Thank you for being with me in that moment. And underneath all of that is, I felt so loved. And the way to differentiate a charism versus a talent is kind of tricky, so let's let's break that down. A charism is from the Holy Spirit, right? He's the third person of the Trinity. He is a full person, as distinct and unique as Christ and Abba are. And he is here as a manifestation of love of God's love that is sketched into our core, our innermost soul. That's where he lives. And in charisms, the Holy Spirit is acting through us to glorify the church. Charisms are for the world, to bring people to God. Talents are for us. We don't necessarily feel a call to be public with them. For example, you might love to draw, but you don't really have a desire to post your drawings on social media or to share them with others. And we also have to practice to get better with our talents. Versus charisms, you can't really practice. The main thing you can do is listen more closely to the Holy Spirit and trust in Him more deeply because He's doing 99% of the work. 
Charisms come from the Holy Spirit. So the best place to start is to deepen your relationship with Him. First, invite the Holy Spirit into your life in small and big moments. He needs our consent to act, and we have to say yes to Him to be able to even accept our charisms. Mary didn't just become Jesus' mom. She had to say yes to Angel Gabriel, like Eileen was saying earlier. It can be as simple a prayer as, Come Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Just that simple. The next uh, tip is to be quiet and just quiet your heart so you can hear his voice in the deepest part of your soul because that's where he lives. There are lots of barriers and wounds and distractions as we try to dig deep. And that's a lifelong journey, like we'll talk about a little bit later today. And really to come to that silence, it helps to find a form of prayer that feels the most natural and calming to you. That can be scripture time, writing letters to God, drawing peacefully and prayerfully, whatever makes sense for you. Really just go to where you feel at ease. And then the third tip is to really listen with an open heart and confirm in prayer. Use the discernment skills that Cloda and Sister Joseph Marie were just talking about. Pay attention to those little nudges that you feel where the Holy Spirit might be telling you something. It could be a new light, something you never thought of that all of a sudden is coming up. It could also be an invitation to contemplate powerful words that you just want to sit with. It could also be courage, doing something you've never really wanted to do and all of a sudden you feel this desire to say or do something. That might be the Holy Spirit kind of nudging you there. Now, I often hear when I chat with my friends about this, how do I know if it's the Holy Spirit or just me? Trust me, I have hit that wall. And here are some tips that I found have been helpful for me personally. The number one tip is repeated messages. God is incredibly patient and he repeats things over and over again. You don't need to overanalyze, which I am guilty of. So really just pay attention to what you keep on seeing because after a while, it's just gonna be too obvious to ignore. The next thing is several sources, especially prayerful companionship. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. From Matthew. Isn't that beautiful? And Mary and the saints also can intercede with us. So pray with your sisters, your friends, your family, and pray with the saints because that's power right there. That's uniting two or three with Jesus for him to be more present. And finally, pay attention to the fruits. What would come out of this if you were to act? What does come out of this if you do act on the Holy Spirit's inclinations? Does it move you to fear and anxiety? Because that's not from God. Does it move you to hope and freedom? Because that probably is from God. So you can pay attention to what comes as well. And the big thing is you don't need to rush, right? Just wait until you see a steady message. And when you do recognize it, act and take that step, that tiny step to do something about it. So taking a step back a little bit more, the Holy Spirit's role is to help carry us and build the church. Tomorrow, we celebrate Pentecost, which is one of my favorite feasts because it is nine days after Jesus' ascension into heaven. He just peaced out, basically, and his disciples were terrified. Jesus had ascended. They wouldn't even go outside because they were afraid of being persecuted and killed. It was really rough. And they had been praying and fasting for nine days, closed up in a little house. We kind of feel that right now, huh? And something changed. Something was born out of that moment. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The Holy Spirit was given to the church at Pentecost tomorrow so that the disciples could courageously proclaim Jesus' love to the entire world. And the best part to me is that the Holy Spirit didn't just exist in the early church. He exists right now. He manifests himself today in this moment. And his mission 
is to spread God's love in our own hearts and in the hearts of others. The goal of charisms, which come from the Holy Spirit, which are the Holy Spirit acting through us, their goal is to glorify Christ and his church. They are ways to bring God to others. Because the Holy Spirit is doing 99% of the work anyways, And so the results are a reflection of him, not of me. And we have a unique role to play that God has sketched out for us, and it fits into the wider church. St. Paul has an amazing text on the body of Christ. Now you are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. One church in Christ, one body in Christ, means that everything I do impacts Christ, the church, and every single one of you. St. Paul continues, if one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. So everything I do, good or bad, will impact you. That is both an amazing gift and a huge responsibility, which means we get to work together as a church to say yes to our charisms. We're all on the path to sainthood. None of us are perfect. And so we get to lift each other up in that journey. And community comes to help and encourage us. We can step away from envy or jealousy because that's not from God. We know that. And you could really think of it as a lever. As I practice my charisms, I lift my sisters up. And as my sisters practice their charisms, they lift me up. And together, we all get closer to Christ's heart. And that's the whole point at the end of the day. We are today's saints. We are what the church needs now. St. Paul writes in the letter to the Ephesians, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Those charisms are tools for us. They are gifts for us so that we can build up the church. And saying yes to our charisms enables Christ to be reflected through us to the world. We are vehicles, carriers of Christ's love and mercy, and we're invited to be a blessing, as simple as that, just be a blessing to others. And remember, each of our charisms are unique to us. None of us have the same set of charisms, and that means that we are all necessary to build up Christ's full stature. Each and every one of our charisms matter so that we can see a more full reflection of Christ. He needs our fiat. He needs our consent to become clearer to the world for Jesus to come clear through us, to encounter people wherever they are, as they are, because we're the ones who encounter them. And you all know it. There's a hunger, a thirst for authentic love. You see that. And we're called to live out that love of Jesus in our own lives, what we're seeing today, what we see every day, hopefully, to be the lights of hope in this world. This is an amazing and daunting calling. I don't know about you, but it's big, at least to me. So always come back to humility and simplicity and love. You are called to a precise mission that fits you exactly. It's really just your precise mission. So ground yourself in prayer and scripture and silence to learn to listen to God's gentle invitation. We're always learning to listen more closely, always learning. Then practice. Slowly, try things out. You'll see where you feel energized. You'll see where you're getting incredible results and unsolicited positive feedback. Where you see those three things, There's the Holy Spirit. He's at work in those moments. And always remember, Mary and Christ walk with you. So listen and act courageously. You are today's saints. I want to invite you to pray with me for the Holy Spirit to reveal himself and our unique calling in this chapter, this moment in our lives, not before, 
not after right now, this present moment. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. Please walk with us in this day, in this journey, as we process all we are receiving and all you are stirring in us. Help us to accept where we are. Come, Holy Spirit. Help us love ourselves and accept we are Abba's beloved daughters. Come, Holy Spirit. Send down your flames and invigorate the fire in our souls. Come, Holy Spirit. Ready our hearts to say yes to the gifts you wish for us. Come, Holy Spirit. Give us the humility to give these gifts back to you. Come, Holy Spirit. Strengthen us with courage and audacity to act. Come, Holy Spirit. Open our hearts so we can hear, see, and believe. Come, Holy Spirit. Teach us to accept your love. Come, Holy Spirit. Jesus, most holy, we come to your blessed heart, pierced with love for us. Teach us to come to you in all things. Jesus, I trust in you. Increase our desire to love you and your church. Jesus, I trust in you. We welcome you into the deepest parts of our souls. Jesus, I trust in you. Blessed Father, we come to you with joy and peace. Help us to embrace your love for us. Your will be done. Help us accept that your desires for us are wonderful. Your will be done. Give us the courage to live fully, fearlessly whole. Your will be done. Mother Mary, Queen of Heaven, please bring this petition to the Trinity. Bring us closer to Jesus' heart. Blessed are you. Increase our desire to pray the rosary. Blessed are you. Show us our unique paths as women today. Blessed are you. Send your spirit, Lord, and open our eyes and hearts to accept your charisms. Soften our hearts that we may listen and act with courage. In Christ, through Mary's intercession. Amen.